All right. Well, welcome everybody to the last workshop of the day. Hopefully uh, the conference has gone well so far. Uh, I'm Adam Archer. Uh, I'll be a co-host of this workshop. Uh, this is uh, Vietnam Tech Conference uh, ninth um, year, and I'm honored to be part of, uh, of that with Saigon South International School and Eunice Hanoi. Uh, it's also my honor to introduce you uh, on behalf of the VTC committee to uh, Bryson Davis and Cecil Mack, who are our presenters today, and they'll talk to us about Odyssey gamified orientation courses and micro badging from uh, at Eunice Hanoi in this workshop. So Bryson hails from Washington DC uh, area of the US and grew up bouncing around from international schools like a lot of his students. Uh, he's been teaching educational technology and design thinking for the past 14 plus years and another 10 years in industries um, in graphics design, web design uh, for companies like the Yellow Pages and Hershey's. Uh, he's currently pursuing um, ways to more effectively personalize the experience of our students um, and is interested in researching the and prototyping adaptive learning platforms. Uh, also uh, with him is Cecil, so both tech uh, innovation coaches at UNIS. Uh, he's our, in our secondary school and uh, his goal is to connect students with solutions to sustainable development goals uh, using technology as an enhancement and it looks for opportunities to connect students to the real world, be creative and work with incredible international staff, uh, which has uh, made his lifestyle something to be happy about. So uh, welcome to you too, and welcome everybody. And uh, over to you guys. Thanks, Adam. There you go. All right, so Cecil is going to present and then we will be off and running. got to unmute. Yes. So uh, I put in a Mentimeter in the uh, group chat. Uh, if somebody can repost it, just in case if new people come in, um, I'll be presenting. Uh, Mentimeter is a digital surveying uh, platform that's very useful when it comes to just kind of visualizing some data. So um, today uh, over the agenda, we want to talk about just Introductions, of course, uh, the Mentimeter, um, talk about goals for the session, where we started in our school year, the planning phases of how do we build a better orientation for our students that are coming in at different points in the school year. We'll talk about our bridge program, which is meant for new students. And then uh, Bryson will take over talking about Classcraft and Odyssey, both asynchronous, our first version, and then 2.0 of how do we make it more interactive synchronous. Uh, with some other cool things and then talking about just overall remote learning and orientation models and then maybe hopefully you can walk away with a roadmap um, that tells you here's what i would like to reinvent with my orientation or this is how i'd like to at least consider how we could help students in the future so the first question uh, was how much time is devoted to orientation after students start classes and so, you know, most schools, they have a pre-orientation before they arrive on campus. There's an orientation process that usually lasts a couple of days or a couple of sessions. But um, we wanted to find something because we have the benefit of time uh, when it comes to iBlock. iBlock is kind of like this discovery time. Uh, we allow students to continue their orientation past, you know, the first week of school. And so they all get enrolled into this Odyssey program. Uh, where Bryson is the facilitator and then I support him. And then, uh, so I'm curious uh, what people's um, timeframes for orientation would be. Another question is, how would you prioritize the orientation content you would like students to learn about? And so the reason why we ask this is, there is not one answer, different schools, different needs, different kids, um, but it all comes down to kind of what we grouped as technology standards, school culture and value, core technology tools, Google Suite, LMS systems, uh, school norms, schedules, rules, AUP, handbook, uh, curricular language, like the language of the school, MYP, IB, all the acronyms, AP, um, global issues, or in our case, we use the sustainability developmental goals, um, student portfolios, which is gonna be useful everywhere, and then service learning, which is of course, big heart and soul of our school. So uh, if I go into Mentimeter, boop, and that is the presenting mode. 
Doop. So when we talk about, would you prioritize orientation content? It looks like core technologies, Google Suite LMS seems to be the top priority. Uh, school norms come second, school culture value, curriculum language, student portfolio, global issues, technology standards, and service learning. So that's you know certainly a good way of approaching it. You want the kids to be able to use the tools before they learn the culture. But then that final bit of, you know, but it's interesting that the technology standards are so far away from the technology tools. So that's something to be thoughtful of. Um, but then also service learning is how can they get back to the community, which is probably the most highest level of engagement. They know the culture, now they can get back to it or they can contribute to it. So thank you for participating. And now I need to, oh, and someone has added to it, thank you. Uh, let's see, yeah, school culture value, still a part of it. Okay, and so student portfolios have actually moved up. So yeah, so um, we'll revisit these before the end and just uh, if people come in late, we can always double check that. Doop, doop, doop. Okay, so the goals for the session today. Uh, we want to help define ways students can feel a part of a learning community. Um, you know, when you are the new kid in the school, it's, it's different than being the, I've been at the school for multiple years, I'm going from grade five to grade six. I already know kind of the community, I know the culture, but now I want to feel a part of it. And so with a new student, especially during, um, you know, distance learning, well, I say the uh, pandemic, we, we had students who are new to the school and new to the country, went through quarantine, then go directly into the classroom. And so how do you make sure that they feel connected and supported in this is our school, this is our culture. Um, so that was just a real big need in our brains. Um, we also goal is to share the experience about building a better, more adaptable orientation for new students. It's never perfect, but you know, it's, it needs to be refined. It's a process. Um, to give time to also comment, collaborate and create your own plan for building your own orientation or just at least re-examine it and how can you make it better for both online and uh, in-person learning. So how we started. So we started with the needs of the students, new returning students on campus, but also new students straight out of quarantine. Um, we thought about, well, you know, how do we, uh, how do we make sure it's active and engaging, visually interesting? And this is where Classcraft came very quickly to the top of that list. We also have an Elevate program that we use for new teachers and new students, and especially our design students, that uses, um, it's kind of a badging system where it's self-guided, they have tutorials and videos and websites and content that they would then check off saying, I know this, I could teach this, or very rarely do they say they don't know it, but at least it's a way for us to gauge and track students' interaction with the content and at least have a place that they can always be referenced to. Um, also, we want to talk about, well, future tech vision. Um, we, we've been in the process, Adam especially uh, can speak to this, but we've been trying to re-look at our tech vision for the next couple of years. How do we visualize it? How do we communicate it? How do we just document better what we already know we're doing to be able to say, okay, we need to do A, well, we've done it here, B. Um, so just being able to support that um, back with our new students and then also kind of tracking their growth as they've been at the school. Now, when we started the school year, um, a lot of our students uh, that were new to the school, but also um, new to the country, we wanted to kind of get them acquainted to school life. So we, cre called, we created a program called the Bridge Program. Uh, this was facilitated by teachers in quarantine or remotely from all over the world. Um, we had, I think about 30 something students at one point and literally as they would finish the bridge program, they would then leave and then go to campus. And as this process is continued, we started off in Google um, as a Google site. And what we did was we had embedded activities, we had Padlets, we had Flipgrids, we have tutorial videos, and we realized this is really useful. And wouldn't it be great if we had something that maybe lasted a little bit longer for the students who aren't familiar with the school, but also able to um, gain a lot of um, insight into 
what are their passions? What are some of the projects that they could potentially be working at school, uh, especially connecting it to our service program and building a portfolio even before they start school. So then uh, next, uh, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be going into a Google Sheet, uh, sharing kind of the outline that we had for the whole program. And there's a bit.ly link that hopefully someone's posted into the chat. Uh, so that way we can uh, see what's going on. Right, so I've just, I've just posted the, the bit.ly link in. And the idea of this is that we go in and we'll go into breakout rooms um, and just just talk about some of the ideas that uh, we've we've put together as topics for the orientation program, and then discuss and hopefully come away with um, topics that you guys might use in your orientation programs and kind of build off of each other's uh, contributions. So. If we're okay, we, we will go into a rather small breakout rooms. Uh, we'll welcome back. All right. So um, I'm just going to take over just a little and, uh, and share my screen and see what we came up with. Um, so just in terms of what we got out of that very quick brainstorming session, uh, group one came up with uh, a lot of core technology skills that are relevant to those current contexts um, that, that they're in. Um, school cultures, items, uh, and then curricular language based on, in this case, the MYP and, and some, uh, some AAP teachers as well. Um, and then group two uh, focused a little more on the learning skills. So public speaking, uh, we, we find a lot of students are coming in and in our context, uh, we've got uh, over 60 nationalities. Students are coming in from, you know, a national system in Korea, a uh, national system in India, a national system, uh, you know, and out of uh, the UAE. Um, they're, they're coming in from all these different cultural contexts and school curricular contexts. So maybe they have a huge amount of public speaking. Maybe they don't. Maybe they've had um, a huge exposure to technology. Maybe they've never used uh, a MacBook or, or a Chromebook. So it's trying to figure out what students are coming in and meet them at their, uh, at their level where they are of experience. Um, looking at core technologies, uh, how to search online, how to program, how to do our uh, AI, um, school cultures. These are, you know, mission and values. Uh, I often find a lot of orientation programs don't necessarily cover the school's mission and vision, um, which you would, you would hope or you'd think is kind of a, a core point that you'd want to cover with students um, and, and teaching facility or faculty as well. Um, let's see. And then curricular language, we we're talking about um, MYP command terms, things that are in the rubrics that maybe students don't understand uh, how they're being judged or, or what that number means in, in the grading system. Um, so that's just some, some examples. So um, that's kind of just a, a really rough idea of, of what we've put together here. And you guys can feel free to copy and paste that link. These are all the things we've come up with, um, but they're, we're gonna steal your ideas as, as we go through this and, and add to ours. Um, we're all pirates here. So, um, so that's some examples of, of what we've used. Then uh, just, just going back into this, this planning phase, we looked at uh, the academics, the Unis Hanoi values, technology, things like ISTE standards, digital citizenship, especially, um, and things like uh, during distance learning endorsed apps. Um, we found that during distance learning, we had a huge amount of app sprawl um, and we wanted to, to create a limited amount of, of apps that we endorsed so that our students weren't overloaded and our teachers weren't overloaded. Um, so those are the ones that we could support and kind of uh, maintain and that way it's it's not so many different things. Um, so I'm just gonna show you uh, how we, we did this in Classcraft, but the bit.ly link here 
which um, I'll paste or, or Cecil will paste into the uh, into the chat. That brings you to um, this Odyssey website, which we're kind of in the process of creating. Um, we've already got the version in Classcraft, which is the asynchronous version. This is more appropriate for some of the older grade levels. So we're thinking about restructuring this for um, some ninth and 10th graders. And we didn't feel like Classcraft would be as engaging um, to them, but maybe it, maybe it could. Um, the previous session that went through Classcraft with uh, Carlos Diaz, I believe, um, was talking about how he had used it from third grade all the way up to 12th grade. So perhaps it is uh, relevant. We've just found, we've, we've targeted middle school for sixth through eighth grade, and we found success in engaging the kids with Classcraft. So just to show you, um, so you all have access to this because you won't have access to the, to the Classcraft. Um, just to show you, this is kind of the, the Odyssey, Rise of the Phoenix. Incidentally, um, Odyssey is a group of phoenixes. That's why we called it, because Phoenix is our mascot. Um, so this kind of just goes through really quickly what some of our values are, our mission statement. Um, we're heavily into the sustainable development goals because we're a UN school. Um, so it goes through a, a quick video of our students retelling their, their school. There's a video of Beyonce singing at the UN uh, convention. Um, and these are the, uh, the areas that we just touched on. These are kind of the, the topics that we narrowed it down to uh, in terms of what we thought we could do in these 18 hours of uh, a quarter long session. So we broke the Odyssey iBlock, which is a quarter long session of 18 hours into groups for rolling admission. So quarter one, we had about 60 students come in. Then quarter two, we only had about, about 10 students come in. Quarter three, uh, I currently have, I think, six students in my class. So it's a huge amount in the, in the beginning and then it dwindles down. But the idea behind this is that if you have a student who comes in mid-year, mid uh, then have they covered things that were covered in the very beginning of the year in, for example, their, uh, their health class or their counseling class. And if there's core items that we really wanted to convey to those students, we'd really retouch on that at different points in the year to make sure that any new student coming into our, our course or our, our school was prepared and understood and kind of not left behind with those lessons. Um, so those are the things that we kind of narrowed it down to, but we'll, we'll probably expand or, or contract some of those. Um, we use Classcraft. Uh, I won't play the video because um, you, can, you can play it on your own time. But uh, as Carlos touched on in the other session, it's a very good tool for gamifying your lessons, especially during the pandemic, uh, thinking about asynchronous learning where students are, are going at their own pace. So you can enable students to actually just go at their own pace and not have to worry about um, checking on their work uh, too much. What we do is we use Seesaw for them to submit their work. Um, and that way I can, I can check on that and their parents have access to that as well. So it's, it's very flexible, even if we have students come in at different stages of uh, even the quarter long class. Um, this is the course outline that Cecil came up with. Um, so the idea was the, the warm up. Uh, it's usually a Kahoot or a Quizlet. Quizlet Live is great. Um, the content that we're going to go through. So it could be videos on um, why we don't allow phones in, uh, in the middle school. So we, we show the trailer for screenagers, uh, for example, and that kind of goes through some of the, the, the tough conversations that parents and, and teachers go through with, uh, with their students in terms of uh, screen time and uh, real self-management. Uh, then we talk about activities and we do those uh, typically on um, uh, Elevate, which is our, our badging program um, or a Google site. Right? We run through those things, uh, Google Forms, things like that. And then we archive it. Uh, we were previously using Padlet and we still use Padlet, um, uh, but I've switched it to Seesaw because I found it easier for, um, for me to 
to kind of monitor their progress with, with that. I'm a big fan of Seesaw. Um, we did our own MYP um, kind of statement of inquiry, factual questions, conceptual questions, and debatables. These are all relevant to um, the culture that we're trying to uh, elicit from these students. So valuing the culture they bring in from their previous schools and also uh, kind of looking at our, our culture and asking them to kind of inviting them to, to be a part of that culture as well. Um, so all the MYP jargon. Uh, the reason these, these buttons down here, uh, which is actually the, the core guts of the course, um, aren't really frilly is because it's still a work in progress. So the only thing right now that's, that's active is chapter one, and I've just finished rehashing that. So uh, if you bear with me, I will, I will end up giving you uh, more and probably the, the coming weeks, I'll be able to finish off chapters one through four. Um, but at this stage, this is, this is kind of how we, we break it down as an example. So we do a Kahoot introduction and then they end up creating their own Kahoot um, and then sending that on to their parents. Um, and we go through our learning management system and, uh, and Seesaw. So those are just some examples. We, we do a goose chase to get to, to know the campus. Um, and, and then just in case they're still virtual or asynchronous, then this is an actual virtual tour of our campus. So those are some examples. So this is again, designed for the older grades and we're, we're kind of copying and pasting certain things over from uh, Classcraft. But here is the Classcraft version. So again, this is the gamified version for grades six through eight, uh, self-paced. And the idea is that they would come into this game, only see this island, uh, because they haven't been able to have access to these other islands. So if they were to click into this area, for example, um, it opens up just like one of the app games that, that you may have played. I don't know if you guys are gamers, but, um, but this whole area would be in clouds and they would only have access to this area down here. So they'd go into the storyline and See, so I'm, with your permission, I'm going to play the, uh, the kind of cheesy uh, Odyssey video. Amazing. <laughs> Hi, I'm Felix of Phoenix, and I'd like to welcome you to the Eunice Hanoi family. A group of Phoenixes is called an Odyssey, which can also mean a great journey. Let's start our journey together with a simple question that will help you understand our school a little bit better. What can you do to make a difference in the world? <laughs> so, hi, um, I'm Felix of Phoenix, oops. and I'd like to welcome you. So, so basically, that was done with uh, what was it, Blabberize? Is that right? Yeah. Um, so you just upload a, a photo of anything you'd like, and then you you make it you make it talk. Um, so this is pretty pretty text heavy and and kind of you know not not as as beautiful as I'd like it to, to be, but overall it, it works. Um, they followed through the, on the instructions. So they usually have a storyline, um, a task, and in some cases you can do um, discussions as well. So again, this is all mimicked on, on the Google site. So this is kind of how they run through. There's also boss battles, which are um, essentially summatives. Um, so you, you go through and, and try and defeat, uh, I think this is the what is this? The Frightened Wazzler or something. Here it is. The Frightened <laughs> Wazzler. <laughs> so they've got all of these um, already built in and you can embed a uh, Google form um, quiz that they actually uh, have to fill out. So that's just kind of a, a rough overview. We found a lot of success um, in how we use this. So you've got the, the game dashboard and you have these students and they've, they've created their own costumes and they've put together uh, XP experience points, GP is gold points. Um, so it's, it's a pretty interesting way of, of kind of talking through uh, or gamifying your, your learning. Um, Wheel of Destiny, the writers of day, this was something that Carlos really um, promoted, um, which are, are, you know, boss battles that we were talking about. Um, these were kind of random things that happen 
uh, to a player. So you can, you can customize all of those things um, and just pick a random player. So those are, those are the, the ideas behind that. Um, so let me just go back to our presentation, double check. Uh, the, so the ultimate goal of this is we've put it under the umbrella of, we're introducing this to, um, to students, trying to get them in a part of our culture. A huge part of our culture is service learning. So we ask them to identify with a service learning group. Um, we've got a lot of service learning groups uh, and we've, we've kind of grouped them into the SDGs. So where, where those um, service learning groups are uh, relevant to the SDGs. And so we have them investigate those service learning groups and kind of create um, a curiosity journal on what their experience with that similar SDG is and what they could bring to the table. And then they make a, a presentation. And they eventually end up coming up with a, a student portfolio that they can use to, to house their academic, co-curricular and service learning work. And that looks like um, this. Once it loads. Oh, this is the edited version. Uh, Bryson, we had a question. Do we use Classcraft and other purposes outside of orientation? Um, I wrote that we were talking about, you know, with Neil in elementary might be a good rollout, but then we're mm -hmm. kind of just building something that we can then demonstrate to teachers. But I didn't know if you had other conversations. Right. Um, no, we, we haven't yet. Um, we, we were really just using this as a, a pilot program, especially for distance learning, uh, considering that we'd, we'd want students to be self-paced and asynchronous. Um, but now we're in the process of, of with, the, with the Google site, trying to make more synchronous activities. Um, and as, as Cecil alluded to in another conversation, um, we, we view a lot of teachers with superhero uh, or, or superpowers. And one teacher in particular, I, I would say, if there was a fun integration specialist, that's who she would be. Um, so trying to figure out how to inject fun and, and different protocols to make some of these things um, a little more interesting in a synchronous environment. That's something that we're, we're now trying to, to rejig for the third version of this. Yeah, and it's one of those things that if you go into Classcraft, there is actually a lot of existing uh, games people have already made. And you can literally just copy paste it and then customize it to your own. So we're focusing just on orientation, but there's a lot of uh, example games out there. Right. Um, so at this point, uh, we'll we'll go back to um, Mentimeter. Um, I'll go ahead and paste this into the oh, chat. Yep. Okay. Um, and we'll just talk about uh, three things that you believe we should focus on in any uh, and all new student orientations, along with how you would ensure uh, that an orientation is successful for students at any time of the year. And then I'm going to stop sharing and we'll go into that Mentimeter. Okay. And so um, while we're uh, waiting for people to put in the results, uh, Bryson, can you tell a story about the kid who burned through all class craft faster than we could? <laughs> Yeah, so so we had um, we had a, a few students who who came in late uh, late in the year and you know only had about we it, it was kind of a fine line. So we have students who rip through this really fast because it's self paced um, and they're really into the game of you know they've got pets and they've changed their clothes and in their characters and they've gotten all these gold pieces and all these things um, and so they they really are engaged and you can see. Uh, even even from the analytics that Classcraft gives you, uh, that they were on, you know, at 7 p.m. doing this multiple times and kind of going through four or five different uh, levels of the game. Um, but so we we had a couple students who who raced through it. Luckily, in in that case, um, they had raced through it 
and we were just redoing a little bit of uh, our digital citizenship part. So we had given them um, Be Internet Awesome. So they, they went directly into that and started on the Google uh, digital citizenship course. So we still had other things to throw at them, but, uh, but there's, there's students who can really go very fast through it. Yeah, no, that was pretty fun. Um, I was going to say, well, and what was, and I, I remember you saying that there was one student who, yeah, they were working on this on their own free time, like, like a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I think what you end up finding with any, anything that's new, shiny and different for students that is, uh, you know, not an LMS that they've, they've used, they've used before. Um, and somewhat competitive and shows their progress, uh, I think they're really engaged in it. And so you'll find that uh, they come to class and, and say, okay, I finished this whole, whole level. What do I do now? Um, luckily, we had already had other levels for them to complete, but uh, you, you start realizing that in a 60 minute time period for 18 hours, you can have students who just complete this super quick. Yeah. And so uh, just kind of going on the Mentimeter right now, um, the way Mentimeter mm -hmm. works uh, with the word cloud is as people type in words, if, it's, if it sees more uh, one word being used more than once, uh, it'll populate and then uh, it'll actually grow the word. So in this case, so the most popular word right now is culture, skills, and identity. And so I think that's a part of just human behavior. We were looking for human connections when we think about being a part of a new community, a new group, or a new school. Um, you want to understand the culture. You definitely want them to. But the question is, how do we bring that to life asynchronously? So next question. Mm -hmm. Boop. Uh, how would you ensure that your orientation is successful for students any time in the year? And so if you are in the same Mentimeter, next question. Uh, if you can just take a moment to write up uh, just your thoughts, uh, we'd love to be able to read those, share those, and um, answer any questions. If you have any, please put them in the chats. I've not taken a look lately. I'll look through now. Okay. But yeah, I think about when, well, you know, when we think about when we were students and we were new students out of school, what were the things that we were afraid to ask? I mean, so one of the things uh, Bryson mentioned uh, briefly was uh, goose chase. And so I'm going to share that now. So goose chase, the way it works is it's basically an online scavenger hunt uh, with the free teacher accounts. Basically, you have the ability to have up to five teams with five devices, so up to 25 people. Um, to, for example, we want to create an a orientation scavenger hunt. So uh, if you are able to see my screen, this is our Eunice scavenger hunt for um, uh, new students. And with the missions, these are things that we have the students do. So this can be, what is the address of the school, take a picture on the playground, Where's the closest fire hydrant? Find a flag, you know, do some push-ups, say thank you to a local staff. Uh, what are your favorite STGs? Find a picture of Felix the Phoenix, go to the library, take a picture of a book. And what's great about uh, Goose Chase is you actually have the ability to um, put in different automations. So you can only move forward with these tasks until you do these tasks. So that's a really cool feature if you want to have a lot of kind of a choose your own adventure, or choose your own, but it's student paced, right? Mm -hmm. um, then of course, once you actually start it, this can be either for 30 minutes or it can be for seven days, um, which is really useful. And what I really love about this is it's me standing in the middle of the campus with a laptop as people or students are running around, taking pictures, pointing at things, saying thank you, finding our admin. And so this is just a feed of all the activities that uh, they're doing. <laughs> What's great about that is, um, we want, so this is just, uh, this was step one. We had these students um, try this scavenger hunt. And then we asked them, what else could go into the scavenger hunt that isn't there? How would you, 
what do you think a student needs to know at our school that could be in the scavenger hunt as a, a location? And so, of course, you know, you do have the leaderboard. So that was, I'm sorry, that was a way that we could improve our existing game even better with student support. And then, of course, uh, later you can look at the submissions. This is great for gathering uh, postable happy student faces. So like we have pictures of students exercising, students at places, looking for logos, looking for flags, saying thank you to leadership. But most importantly, which I think is the coolest thing about it, data is fun, uh, is uh, it, they collect data on what mission was the most popular, which team did the most uh, things, what was the uh, frequency of you know, posts across the session. So this is where you can see engagement, you can see mission popularity, you can see the timeline. So basically people kind of started off slow, then literally got, they got really excited and then kind of tapered off when they tried to finish the last few things. Then you also see like a history of um, which points happened when, what teams got into what point scores. And so actually we're in the process of looking at uh, finding ways to use Goose Chase in our after school, our after school activities. Uh, so that way we can actually track to see what are the most popular ASAs that are virtual or in person. So that we can see, well, how do we, well, if this is working, how do we encourage that? And if this isn't working, how can we make sure students are engaged more? So, um, so that's Goose Chase. Uh, let me just go back to Mentimeter. So assign a mentor, establish a routine. Yep, so that's something that, um, Bryson, did you talk about, maybe you can talk a little bit about the service learning connection. Yeah, so um, so I mean, we we have, I think it's two service learning uh, areas of focus per grade, grade level in grade six, seven, and eight. And so those are uh, predefined groups, but then these are things that um, the, the high school groups are the ones that the students are, are kind of connecting to because they're, they're broader and they can, you know, kind of connect into SDGs or, or previous experiences at other schools that, um, that they're coming to units with. Um, or in fact, they can create their own service learning group and that's kind of encouraging them to be change makers um, and, and take that culture, take our culture a little bit further. Um, so the, the rolling admission aspect of this is really what we're, we're kind of focused on for this point, because if you've got it uh, just based on your home, home based mentors, for example, what, um, what was just put in a Mentimeter, it can, if you have it really structured out, then that's great. But what we find is home-based mentors are going to, are going to be, um, you know, really, really good at, at focusing on one thing and maybe not so good at focusing on other things. So um, what Cecil is showing you is uh, Elevate, which is kind of taking that pressure off of a home-based mentor. And this is what we do for our faculty and, and staff training is they have to do certain things um, and, and it's, it's not you know, up to the, the mentor to, to implement it. It's really, uh, this is our home-based uh, system. I think Adam, is this bubble.is is how we developed this? If Adam's here? Yeah, um, yeah that's correct. Yeah, so bubble.is is um, kind of a code-free way of, of creating online applications. Um, so this is our homegrown badging app uh, and this is the, how we implement our digital literacy course. So they self-assess whether or not they think you know it, feel confident, or could teach it. Um, and then once they do that, uh, you'll see the line at the top is, is kind of loading um, and it starts adjusting their progress. And then eventually, hopefully in the next three or four seconds, um, it will create a badge for that student. And then on their student dashboard, they'll, they'll have a 100% of the badge. Um, yeah, if you zoom out a little bit, you should see the badges show up. If they hide mm -hmm. it, the size is smaller. Oh, okay. Yep, there they go. So, so yeah, so there's the Gmail badge and the Google Calendar badge, and you can see the progress bar has, has updated. Um, so those are just some examples of, of things that were we're trying to do um, the resources that are linked out to here uh, are were developed by Paul Swanson, um, who is our former uh, ed tech um, 
coach. And so this is uh, a digital literacy pathway that kind of goes through the what, the why, the how, and the competency task. So, um, so those are all linked out from our badging program. So another uh, thing written in the Mentimeter was making it self-paced with a human staff counselor teacher on standby if added support is needed. Um, yeah, that's one thing that's when we were, we were on campus and then we went online, uh, one thing we did was because we use Google Hangouts for most of our classes, uh, we actually started a chat group for all the new students uh, that were brand new to the school that they could ask tech questions and then even, you know, post uh, solutions or things that they found and discovered. Um, just a quick little story. There was uh, one student, you know, uh, Bryson, Adam, and myself are all a part of this group chat with those new students. But one of the students was able to get to the solution faster than all of us and totally, you know, just answered, took care of tech support uh, for one of the other new kids. And that's kind of the things that you want. You want to build that culture where the students are helping each other, right? So that was kind of a easy, fun win. And I'm just chatting back. Um, so, so we use we use Elevate for for faculty and staff training. Um, we're currently developing some training programs for position accounts. So, for example, you know, if a new librarian were to come in, or a new counselor were to come in, or a new secretary were to come in, um, they would have a, a customized pathway of all the things that that they should should cover um, on learning management system or or tools that we use. Um, and then we piloted it last year for design, um, and we wanted to make sure that every student, I'm a design teacher as well, um, every student had safety training and got 100% on the quizzes um, So before they used the tools. So that link that I just threw in there is our old version of the, the design safety videos and a Google form, but then we've converted that all to Elevate so we can track it a lot better. Um, and this is just a kind of a, a final uh, point of what we were hoping to get out of the, the Odyssey course was time for students to, to really adjust to the school, adjust to the culture. Um, you know, you could, I mentioned it in the breakout rooms, but you can try and cram all of this stuff into a, a week long or a two week long breakout session. Uh, but it's really difficult for, it's so so overwhelming for new students, especially in a pandemic, um, to come into any new school um, mid-year or, or even at the beginning of the year and be expected to have read through the entire student handbook, for example. Um, so we focus on certain things uh, in the student handbook and we discuss those things. Uh, those are those are not conversations that I think would typically happen in in a lot of orientation programs. Um, so this is a Friday thank you from that was written by a student who just exited the program, um, and you can you can read it. Um, but we thought that was very sweet. Uh, it was just something that we felt like okay, even if this one student <laughs> is the only one we we reached, we did a good job. Um, in, in supporting and making her feel safe uh, and, and a part of the culture coming and in. It's, and it's one thing um, because the students have more time with, I don't want to say their cohort, but the students that are new as well. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely have seen a lot of these students connected to those students continuously, but also branching out and connecting to other students as well. So it's good to right. see them embedded into the culture and feeling safe and comfortable to, you know, put themselves out there. For sure. But so, yeah, um, that's kind of all we had to cover today. Um, I was going to say, if people want to unmute and ask questions, uh, you're welcome to. Um, hopefully you have gained some, either some tools or some knowledge or some considerations for your own orientation program. Um, it's never done, honestly, but it's, it's, it's one of those things, um, you know, Bryce and I've worked on this and he's done an amazing amount of time in class craft. So it's really just a matter of finding just at least not a silver bullet, but the closest thing you can, as pure as you can, um, solution that actually connects the kids. Yeah, it's I mean, this is going to be evolving 
uh, you know, you have the link to the, to the website. Um, it'll be evolving even more uh, by the end of the year. Um, and the, the hope is that we expand it down to grade four and five, um, especially with Classcraft and, and just use PYP term, terminology for primary years program as opposed to MYP. Um, and then the, the Google site, uh, a version of that goes up to ninth and 10th grade. So, you know, eventually we'd love, we'd love to expand it all the way through D through 12. But uh, I think that's something that, um, you know, I think in, in, in primary years, it's, it's a lot more uh, based on the home, homeroom teacher. But yep. hopefully that was a lot of takeaways. Um, and if you guys have any questions. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, Bryson, uh, Tyler Gates here. I just have a question for you, if you don't mind. Um, I'm teaching design as well at ASDN. Um, I just have a question for you about, um, do you think either um, Elevate or Classcraft could work for students who are just coming to uh, MYP design and they don't know the design cycle yet or any of the command terms or anything like that? Uh, do you think it would be like um, something that could be used for that purpose, just to introduce kids to um, how it works and the expectations and because there's a lot of info that they get kind of get thrown at so if they're just coming to MYP design and they're not really familiar with it so I mean you go through this over and over again but uh, it just takes a while for them to adapt to it so do you think that would be um, possible to do or definitely um, I think you know uh, again we started designing this for um, for students who come in mid-year especially, um, and, and really thinking about core, core things that you, you can't miss, right? So what does the rubric mean? What are the command terms? What are these things that, you know, what are you graded on? Um, what level of detail are you, you being expected to do? So in design, it's, it's no different. Um, you'd be looking at uh, putting a step-by-step -step progression um, that really baby steps them through uh, the first, I'd say, you know, week or week and a half um, of real basic design skills that they're going to need to know uh, before following on with the design cycle. Um, we have uh, the, the link I just shared um, to our workshop tools. Um, feel free to look through our design site. Uh, that's essentially a textbook with all, of, all 41 of our units. Um, and so that really goes through uh, the orientation that we do and uh, the way the checkpoints that we grade um, and, and how we how we do everything in, in design and how we teach it. Yep, thanks a lot. Yep. Anyone else, if you'd like to ask about anything, um, we are wealth of uh, fountains of knowledge, so. <laughs> okay. Uh, one more question for Cecil. Um, if you could pick any tool, any tool at all, what would be your go-to tool, your number one? For, for which purpose? <laughs> yeah, uh, for, um, let's say, for the purpose of um, getting students motivated in class to do things. Uh, motivation, I think, I think Classcraft really does um, a great job uh, of, of getting students into that gamified learning environment and still, you know, still doing formatives and summatives, right? Like it's still, <laughs> if anybody were to look at it, <laughs> you'd look at it and go, this is all the exact same thing that, that we're teaching them on a Google site or on Seesaw or whatever. But the fact that they can buy a pet <laughs> or change their outfits or, or their clothes um, with the gold pieces that you re rewarded them for, for completing an online activity, they go through the roof. So, so definitely it is a, a really valuable tool for engagement. Um, I think the, for, for me in terms of turning things in as, a, as an LMS aspect of it, um, I have found Seesaw to be uh, yeah, amazing. Um, the the parent interaction uh, that you get with with uh, parents kind of seeing a window into your classroom and then progressing again those activities. Um, and I've I've put on uh, publicly uh, the entire design cycle um, of activities onto uh, Seesaw. So if you if you want to look for that, feel free to email me. Yeah, and. Do you uh, 
or sorry, um, do you see soft for all grades or just for elementary or middle? Um, we use it ele elementary all the way up to middle school through grade eight. Yeah, I was just gonna chime in um, as far as uh, engaging platform where a student feels empowered and engaged. Um, I've always loved Scratch. Um, I, I tell my students, you know, you can be a user of your phone, the apps, the games, social media, the filters, whatever, or you can be a creator. So learn how those things are made. And so if you literally between YouTube, they can find any tutorial that they could possibly ever need to independently study. And they're already on there. It's just, how about watching a better tutorial on how to create a game that you already play like dig dug or Flappy Bird, and instead of just, you know, having to just use it all the time and not know what's happening on the other side. And um, I think when a student has, so one project we did was the students had to duplicate an existing tutorial and then enhance it. They had to change the skins, the sprites, the dynamics, the physics, the rules of the game, make it multiplayer, add a, another element to the game. And when we did the round robin or gallery walk and everyone tried out everyone else's game, a kid felt really empowered when people were like, you made this, this is really cool. It's an RPG with like multiple screens. That's amazing. I think that's really empowering to the kids. And so, yeah, I love me some scratch in combination with YouTube. Mm -hmm. And we teach, uh, I just put in the link the, for scratch and then also uh, our unit for um, how we teach coding uh, for or JavaScript and Python through code.org. Code Combat is also great. Definitely useful. Yeah. Any other questions? Just some mutes and. Yeah, one thing I'll, I'll, I'll just add from, from uh, participating in some of these uh, things that were highlighted today is there's a lot of um, kind of planning behind them. So in terms of like which tool um, is, is a good fit, sometimes it relates to um, the, the kind of some of the setup and kind of the right fit for where you're at. Um, so for example, with, with Elevate um, that we showed, a lot of the content of, of, of the skills and the, um, that, that the students needed to learn was uh, used to be in spreadsheets. And uh, the question there, all the questionnaires and the surveys that would, would happen towards them, it was something that was kind of built um, and then it, then it evolved into like where we built a platform for it. So I think there's a bit of a progression. So it could be that for uh, kind of getting up and running the site, I think that, that Bryson linked where, where it's just a, where it's a well laid out, um, interesting videos that hit those skills. Um, th those ones were student made videos. So I'd really encourage people to check those out. Um, the students made videos that were so good. I, I just don't picture us actually making ones as good as that. <laughs> so yeah, I think there's a lot of energy off, off uh, students creating stuff and seeing each other's and then they motivate each other. Um, it starts to kind of take off. And then these kinds of uh, innovative platforms kind of layer on and then it just keeps taking off. So it's, it's just amazing. I, I, in, in that earlier session on Classcraft, one of the examples that uh, Carlos was talking about was a student was asking for more homework. <laughs> they were going right. into the break and, and he had to say, sorry, you know, you got to you know, spend some time with your family. <laughs> right. So it's pretty amazing how just how um, much energy is, is there with the, with those students. Right. And, and similar with Elevate. So we had uh, students doing the safety quizzes. We, we started seeing the logs and realizing students were doing the safety quizzes at like nine at night and, and trying to do them, you know, 15 times. And, and just, it, it is its own game because, because they could keep on playing that quiz. Right. Um, but uh, similar things have happened with, with Classcraft. So students will come up to me and it's like, how do I get more GP? How do I get more gold points? <laughs> well, you can give I think some that does highlight uh, how a lot of the, the things that, that, you know, maybe more, I guess, traditional or, or, or the, some of the ways of learning, it's just so different. Like you start putting a little bit of interactivity, even a progress bar, and it just gets so much more engagement. So any, any places you can bring some of those mechanics in can, can make a difference, even if you can find a practical way that doesn't take a huge amount of setup. Because I think that's one of the sides of, of say, um, uh, Classcraft where you need to kind of set up that, that, that journey. 
Um, so there may be places where you, as long as you can support the setup and, and maintenance of that world um, to keep it going, I think will be one of the things we'll be looking at is how do we kind of expand, sustain and, and uh, bring that to more areas um, w without having it um, struggle if there isn't someone behind it sort of thing. So for us, we found that that's why there's different tools, because in some cases it's uh, it, it's worth that investment for that orientation. And in some cases, like for Elevate, it's, it's useful also for like HR and advancement. We've got some of our school admin departments building content that will also go on there, but they want to kind of build it and then let it let it be. They, they wouldn't be in there um, uh, maintaining, but for them, that's where they're at in their journey. Perhaps in the future, that would change after they uh, got used to creating content and instructions for say secretaries or new staff and things like that. Maybe later it gets gamified. So I think it's a little bit of a, we've, we've gone through these stages over time. Right. And I'm just putting in, um, just for those of you who, you know, don't, don't have the ability to, to build out a bubble IS uh, platform of your own. Um, I'm just putting in open badges and uh, Badger. Those are, those are two um, open platforms that you can, you can try and build out your own kind of digital badging program. And actually, I think there's, there's some uh, that are already out there, similar to Classcraft, that you could take a, a badging program and just apply it to your, your context. Very cool. Well, thanks guys, uh, Bryson and Cecil. Thank you so much. And thanks everybody that, uh, you know, if you've been at this conference through the day, there's so much knowledge going on. So thanks for sticking with us on this uh, session. And uh, I think there's a, there is a networking thing at, uh, at four o'clock. There's also lightning talks from previous um, uh, years that are, are, are really great. They're about 10 minutes uh, long each. So, so check those out in the Whova app. And yeah, thanks again for coming. Thanks all. Thank you, everybody. Take care. See you.